Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm back with a Bible journaling process video for you guys. Uh, I hope you've been enjoying the little mini videos over on my Instagram, if you're following me over there. I'm trying to bring them over here as well. They're just a little bit slower to bring out over here, and I'm hoping that will ease up things a little bit so that then I can create process videos that aren't a billion years long. I don't know. We'll see. We know how I how I do things. So I am jumping in and creating my first entry for the note to self devotional kit from by the well for God. If you're curious about this kit, I do have an unboxing I will link down below. I do believe they still have some of these kits in stock, though, very, very few, if any. So if you haven't grabbed it yet, you can head on over and check that out. I have been having so much fun with this kit. Uh, I did a video this week on customizing printables. And in that video, I kind of talked about how I am working through the study portion of this kit. But in case you didn't catch that yet, uh, I am working in a new growth book. This one I received from By the Will for God as a gift. And I will be doing all of my devotional studies from By the Well in this notebook. And then I will be doing some Bible journaling entries. And so this frees me up to take a whole ton of notes. I have gotten so much more out of the study doing it this way. And so kind of what I'm doing is each day, like today, we will be, do we'll be doing day one, the good news. This was written by Tom from By the Will for God. I go through and highlight all of the verses ahead of time. I've gone through and done that for all of them. And then I'm actually writing out every single verse. And I know that might seem a little tedious, uh, but there's something for me about writing it out that just c helps commit things to memory and just really helps me to focus on that verse. And then I look up each verse in my MacArthur study Bible and check out the commentary that he has on that. And so if there's something that kind of stands out to me, I've been writing that down. And then I'll also get on the Blue Letter Bible app and search out other commentaries, um, mostly for the key verse of that day. So whichever their main verse is for the study, um, that's the one I kind of dig deeper into unless there's something else that kind of rabbit trails me. but uh, And then I just mark down different commentaries, different notes on those verses. But as I write out all the verses, it has been so neat to see just how well this devotion was done. I am so proud of my teammates. I am honored to work alongside them. Um, it's just been really neat to see what they're sharing and the scripture that they picked and how well it all works together. Uh, there is some reflection questions in here, but I really have just kind of been letting the verses lead me down the study and just seeing how they all connect, seeing cross references, things like that. So for day one, the good news, uh, I started out with this note for Deuteronomy 6, uh, 4 through 5, which says, uh, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. Uh, and then MacArthur says this passage, actually verses 4 through 9, is known as the Shema, Hebrew for here, has become the Jewish confession of faith and re is recited twice a day by the devout uh, Jewish people people primarily. Uh, and so I thought that was very interesting that this has become something that people regularly recite. And then this is actually repeated here in Mark 12, 28 through it's actually 34. Um, and that is where I will be journaling today. And that's down here where it says the greatest commandment. Uh, one of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating, noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer. He asked him of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher, the man replied. You are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart and with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offers, offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. Uh, and so here we're seeing Jesus you know, repeating back to them a scripture they would have been familiar with back in Deuteronomy. And so I just love seeing 
those connections. I took a ton of study notes. I'm not going to share too much of the study portion. I would encourage you guys to jump in and do your own study, but I do want to kind of reference some of the things that go together in my journaling today. So that's kind of the nice thing about doing two separate kind of deals here. Obviously it'd be difficult to include all of this on a Bible journaling entry. It could be done, but it's a little bit more difficult. So I'm just going to pick a few key things, but then I can do some prayer journaling and things like that uh, here in my Bible. So I'm working in the illustrating Bible this month. Uh, I just wanted to kind of encourage you guys. I know a lot of us have been using the interleave Bible, notebooks, things like that, mini journal, mini books. Um, and so I kind of wanted to go back to Bible journaling for those of you that enjoy that. And so I have pulled out a selection of pieces. I've got some die cuts here from the kit, um, but I'm going to be showing you how to create this fun distressed uh, envelope. And this is going to act like a pocket for all of my notes. I'll also be showing you how to create this really awesome kind of vintage notebook paper. paper. Very, very easy to do. Uh, this vintage style tape, I actually have a shorts video where I showed how to do that um, over on Instagram. It may be over here on YouTube by the time I get this up. I hope, I hope it is. Um, but so I have little items like that. I also have a piece of fabric washi. This was a DIY that I did. I did bring that video over here for you guys so you can see how I did that. Um, and then just some other elements and pieces. For the background, I haven't done ink smushing in a while and I don't want to fuss with bleed through. So I'm going to actually try ink smushing with distress crayons and see, see what happens. See if we get a similar technique. I really want kind of the look of this paper here, uh, something similar to that in the background. So we'll see if we can achieve this, uh, with some crayons. So let me go ahead. I'm going to pull out some other items, but let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we'll put together this entry in, uh, Mark chapter 12. All right, so I have a piece of acetate here and I'm scribbling on some antique linen and old paper distress crayon. And I'm gonna spray this with just some plain water to activate it. And then I'm gonna go in with a paintbrush to smudge that out. I don't wanna transfer those scribble lines to the page. And since this is the first time I've done this, I'm going lighter <laughs> building things up. I do spray the page before I stick it down and um, that's just going to help with blending and then here you can see it was very very light just because the colors I was using was light. So I'm going back in again on the acetate with antique linen and old paper and then I think I bring in a little bit of vintage photo here as well just to kind of darken it up. Now on here you can see there's some like chunky bits learn from me. Don't leave the chunky bits. You need to dissolve the little chunky bits. Uh, I have found that sometimes the distress crayons over time, they start to dry out. Um, and some colors are just drier than others, flakier than others. Uh, not as bad as gelatos. These are not as bad as that. And it's really easy to dissolve the pigment, um, but it will just kind of like plop on the page if you don't dissolve it. So you can go in with a baby wipe to pick those up as well. And that's what I did. So I'm smooshing out those flakes and then going in for a third pass, uh, this time really heavy with the vintage photo. I was just hesitant to go in dark. I didn't want it super, super intense. Uh, and this is what I found with the distress crayon technique is that you do have a lot more control than with distress inks, distress oxides. If you're doing the ink smushing technique, uh, try it with the distress crayons. I feel like they're, especially when you dilute it with water, it's not as out of control. I mean, it, it's probably the colors I used as well, but I just don't feel like it's as intense as using like the dye inks, you know, the oxide inks, things like that. And I can just build it up. I'm just smushing, smushing, smushing. I used an eight and a half by 11 sheet of acetate just so that it would cover most of this page all in one pass. Um, but you could just use some plastic packaging. So I'm going to squish out a little bit of vintage photo and then take a big paintbrush and add some splatters. Um, that particular brush wasn't giving me the splatters that I wanted. So I'm going to go in with a different brush, but you can see that particular crayon for some reason is very flaky. I don't know. My office gets very, very hot over 90 degrees. <laughs> so I don't know if that is influencing the longevity of my crayons, but they, they're fine. They are still usable. Um, they're still smooth. The pigment still dissolves. Um, they just seem to be a little flaky at times, but adding some water just activates it and then turns it into paint. 
So I'm going to set that aside to dry and we're going to work on the envelope. So I have a nonstick craft sheet here and I'm just using some spray stains. I have antique linen, vintage photo, and gathered twigs. And I'm going to add plenty of water. I want those beads of liquid on the sheet and I'm going to dip my piece of vellum into that. Now vellum doesn't love water so you want to work pretty quick. I don't let the water just sit on here for a long time. I'm dipping it, picking it up, drying it, dipping it, picking up, drying it. And when I do this it's just building up layers and giving me those droplets. The droplets is what I'm wanting. I'm not wanting like a solid mass of color. I'm wanting these sprinkles and so you can see that you get that with the nonstick craft sheet. You don't get the same effect as much on a glass mat. So if you're wanting the droplets, use a nonstick craft sheet. But there you go. There's multiple layers of dipping it. And then I'm going to run it through my die cutting machine with this new die from Tim Holtz. This is Postal. And I'm going to cut out that uh, envelope. But before I assemble it, I am going to add some ink. So I am bringing in some gathered twigs. Uh, distress ink and blending it over the envelope. Now vellum, it can take a little bit longer for distress ink to dry on it. So I'm not putting a ton of ink on here. I'm just, just enough to kind of color the vellum and then I'm heat setting it really well with my heat tool and it does, it does dry. You just can't be super, super heavy handed with the ink, but it is, it is semi absorbent. So the vellum does absorb some of it and it will dry. So now I can start assembling this. This that does have like score lines for you to fold on, though those are a little bit difficult to see uh, on the vellum and after you've inked it. But you're able to you're able to get it. Uh, maybe run it through your die cutting machine. You know, a couple of times will make those impressions a little bit deeper. But and I'm only folding the two sides and the bottom. I'm going to leave the top because I'm not going to fold that down. Um, I'm going to actually leave that up. And if I fold it, it's going to be wonky because the vellum has been wet. So just trust me, I'm not folding the top. I am using a little bit of liquid adhesive uh, because this is all going to be adhered to the page. This will be on the back side. So I'm going to set that aside for a moment and then work on my little note card. So again, I have my nonstick craft mat, pulling out some antique linen and old paper distress spray stain. And then I'm dipping a three by five card into that. These are really inexpensive 75 cent cards from Target. Uh, they are really thin, which is fine for this. It really makes it more like notebook paper. And I did notice that that red line at the top started to bleed a little bit, but I think that adds to the vintage feel of it. And again, I'm just dipping, drying, dipping, drying, dipping, drying. I'm trying to not have any white areas. I really love this combination for vintage paper, of course, old paper, but that antique linen just adds something to it. And then I'm going to do the back side as well. And I love how that turned out. And then I'm going to cut this down to two and a quarter. So it's three inches tall, two and a quarter wide. And that's going to create my little notebook pages. And then I'm going to use my spiral punch and my planner punch board and add some uh, decorative to the side here. And these are really easy. You see the little guide there. You just line up the hole that you've punched on that pink guide and just punch along. It's super easy. So there are my little, my little notebooks. I did go ahead and create two of them just so I'd have another one on hand. I'm sure I will use it later on in this kit. Uh, it just made it easy to do while I already had everything inked and ready to go. And then I attached that to a piece of paper and ran that through my typewriter and typed out Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 5. Absolutely love that little piece. And then here's a sneak peek of those faux vintage tapes that I created. Now, uh, I thought I would the, have the video up. It will not be up until next week. So here's a little teaser. Stay tuned. Um, this is what I'll be creating over on Instagram and here in a short video uh, next week. Super easy and love, love, love the look of this. Great way to kind of change up maybe some washi tapes that you're tired of using you know, need, need them to look a little different. So I add a little bit of that to the, that paper. So now I can start assembling things. Uh, these blue leaves I created ahead of time. These were just spray stains on uh, Distress Heavy Stock. And then I die cutted that from a variety of different Tim Holtz 
uh, floral dyes. I've done that technique a million times. Um, spraying the paper, I just used Broken China, Mermaid Lagoon, and Uncharted Mariner. And just sprayed it, saturated the paper, dried it, and then ran it through the die cutting machine. And then here I'm just using some mint tape to hold my cluster together while I add glue. And that's kind of a good idea if you're wanting to do a lot of this kind of mixed media is to create a lot of elements ahead of time. So I had a whole bunch of flowers and leaves created ahead of time. I have this um, fabric washi. I did do, again, a short video on that. So you can see that on my channel here. Uh, and it just created a whole bunch of things all at once. So then it's easier to put pages together quick. I'm gonna bring in some of these rub-on elements. I had mentioned trying to use these with last month's kit and it didn't happen. So I am being intentional about using them with this month's kit. These are from 49 and Market. I did find it easier to kind of cut out the elements from the whole page that I wanted to use. It has these stamps, those little coffee stains I'm gonna use. It does come with that little white bone folder to rub it on with. Um, this little piece is from Tim Holtz from the number snippets or something like that. But uh, the rub-ons are great for adding decorative elements to the background. I will say that these were a little bit harder to use than the Tim Holtz ones. Um, they, they were great. Once they're down, they're down. Like they are really good. I love, you know, the quality, the details, um, but I did have to rub harder to transfer them. I think I'm going to grab the Tim Holtz little, uh, like, pointy tool. I don't remember what it's called, but it's like a little metal tool that's used for these rub-on transfers like this. And I'm going to see if that works better than that white plastic one that comes with it because I did have to scrub pretty hard to get those to attach to the page. But once they're attached, they're attached. They're not going anywhere. So I put those little coffee drips on there and then I'm going to use this stamp is actually from the devotional kit. It says note to self. Uh, I was trying to be intentional about using some stuff from the actual kit so that you guys can see that yes, I do I do use that. Yes, I use a lot of other things from my stash, but I want to incorporate elements from the kit as well. So I'm stamping that with some Versafine Onyx Black Ink. In the final photos at the end of the video, you'll see I do come back and add some red marker into the details of that stamp. And then I'm taking the clear stickers from the devotional kit. I'm going to use one of these pens to highlight the title of this section, The Greatest Commandment. And then I'm going to kind of bookend that passage with one of the die cut pens from the kit. Kind of a fun way to kind of highlight the passage that I'm studying here. And I've got several of these little notebooks. Those other two notebook pages were created using some of the pattern papers from the release. I cut them down to the same size as that vintage paper that I created and then added that spiral detail to the edge. And then I ran those through my typewriter. For this one, I'm going to add the different verses from today's study. So I'm using the stamp set from the kit. I prepped the page with a, a EK Success powder tool because I'm going to do some embossing. Initially, I thought I would stamp with this Candied Apple uh, Distress Oxide ink, but mine is very juicy. It's been like that since the day I bought it, and it was like blurring out the stamp. So I swapped that out for some Versamark, not Versamark, Versamagic, <laughs> Versamagic chalk ink in one of the red colors, and I'm then going to add some Crackling Campfire Distress Glaze over the top of that. And that's just gonna add a little shine to this card. It does also kind of deepen that color a little bit, heat emboss it, and just, I like how it adds a little texture to that notebook paper. And then I will do the other ones in this blue, lighter blue. And then I don't have broken china embossing glaze. So I used salvage patina, which was a little more green and bright than I wanted. It doesn't perfectly match, but it is what it is. I'm already invested in it, in the project. We're already this far, so we're just gonna stick with it. It's okay, it does not have to be a perfect color match, but these are just gonna be like my little, little icons indicating each one of the verses. And you can see I ran that through my typewriter. And I think I also wrote down some of my study notes or typed out some study notes on that other page there. But I can st you know, stick little prayers in here, additional notes when I come back to this page. That is, I love using pockets. I probably put a pocket on like, I don't know, 75, 80% of my pages now because it allows me to really stick a lot of notes in there. And I'm just using some liquid adhesive to attach that envelope to the page. And this particular envelope does have plenty of room to tuck things in. 
Then for my title, I'm going to use some puffy alphas from Felicity Jane. These are Millie, I think. And I'm just going to spell out the good news since that is the title of today's devotional. I've got my trusty little tweezers and tea ruler to get everything lined up. And then I'm going to use the caffeinated outliner stamp. Um, that way I have a little bit of an outline around the alpha stickers from the kit. I haven't used these with the opaque stickers before. It works great with the um, clear stickers to stamp first and then put the sticker. Um, but I did find that I had to go back in and kind of add some black in certain areas when I put these opaque stickers over the top because it did did overlap a, a couple little areas. Maybe I, my hand's just not steady enough to get it in there just right, but it's way easier than me having to go in with a pen and individually outline each one of these letters like I typically do. These are the opaque stickers that come with the devotional kit, but there are the coordinating uh, clear stickers as well. And then I'm going in and I am going around each one of those letters there to tie them in. And here's where I'm adding that little bit of detail anywhere where the stickers overlapped the stamping. Here's a look at the back, no bleed through. That was just a little ink smush that kind of smushed underneath, but no bleed through. So that's a great way to get a distressed background was with the crayons and not have bleed through. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I mentioned today. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.